first. All right, hi, I'm Scott Monahan. I'm the director of Anchorage. Hi, I'm Dakota Loesch. I'm the screenwriter of Anchorage. I play the character Jacob. I play the character John. It's the film about loss, right? The film is about family. The film mm -hmm. is about... Addiction. Um, yeah. Uh, trial and error comes yeah. to mind. <laughs> I don't know. I think American, like... Capitalism, like right, like yeah, the, the American dream, the American dream gone and wrong. Parentheticals, yeah. But if you're talking about like the subject matter of the movie, the movie is about two brothers that are driving a trunk full of opioids from Florida all the way to Alaska to get rich. Yeah, they're gonna get real rich. Yeah, they're gonna cash in big. But they're kind of dipping into their own supply a little. Uh, yeah. They're getting at each other. I don't know if they're gonna make it to Anchorage, but we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. <laughs> This is not my first time directing a film, first for a feature. And yes, I would love to direct more. I think I've been an actor for most of my life. And then um, I've worked and directed in some like theater spaces and like some like kind of like smaller stuff. But a feature was just something that I was, I was just like, why not? You know, it's like, I know this story so intimately. I know it so well. And everything that I need to know how to do, I can figure out online or I can ask someone who's done it before. And the best way to learn how to do something is by doing it. That's how I feel. So it's like, all right, let's do it. So I'm ready for another one for sure. That was like a common bonding feature we had between the two of us is like, we know people that are affected by this. We are personally affected by this, you know, and it was a way to work through that. And then at the same time, it was like, um, Specifically, I had family living in Florida during the opioid boom where it's like you could get Roxy Cotton for 99 cents a pill. They would advertise it on the taxi, you know, and 85% of the nation's opioids were prescribed through the state of Florida and there was no registry for it. So there was this time in the early 2000s where it became this hotbed for drug dealing, like you could go from there. So it became the drug dealer's El Dorado and we were just like, I see this, I see Waiting for Godot, I see Bert and Ernie, I see the Muppet movie, like in Let's Bring Them All Together, and what do you got? Bippity boppity boo. You know what I mean? And that's kind of, that was the stew that was the basis for Anchorage. And also, the um, we wanted to talk about drug use and drug abuse and that the system that these two characters are, are trapped in in a way in which that wasn't demonizing the using of drugs, but also wasn't necessarily glorifying it. Yeah. Um, and I think that uh, oftentimes I see examples of uh, addiction in movies being about the recovery, about um, the relapse, about you know those kind of stories. And we wanted to say, and I think it, it can maybe be a little bit more challenging to present, to say, here is just the abuse now, we're not saying in the film yeah. whether or not... No this, moral judgment. There's no one from the outside coming in to say this is wrong or that you shouldn't do this or that besides the two of us that are in, in the film. So I think and then it I hopefully raises a question about that um, without necessarily providing any answers. Because drug abuse and addiction, specifically with opioids, it walks in your front door through your grandmother or your mom or your broken ankle. Yeah, and someone you have, hurt their back, someone got hurt at work. You have yeah. refills and next thing you know you're hooked on this drug that they know is addictive and they are still, I mean this, Google opioid any day of the week and hit the news button and there is an article every day from all across the country. So we wanted to make a movie about something that we thought was um, yeah, just a fraction of it too. Just yeah, a teardrop in the ocean very small what these story. stories are. You know, like there's so many stories of all different types of people going through because it, it knows no boundaries. Like yeah. all kinds of people are going through this opioid addiction right now. Something that I, I thought about when I was thinking about this film specifically is that, look, I am a, I've had like a, a, a slightly checkered past and my own um, struggles no. with, yeah. No. no. <laughs> and my mother, bless her heart, is an amazing woman that has always been there for me through all kinds of stuff. And I, but she hasn't been there when I, when the things are happening. I tell her what I tell her, these, you know, but I was thinking like, what would uh, like a mother, because these two characters in the film are dealing with the loss of their mother. What if, you know, what if the camera felt like the mother watching her sons falling into this? 
and making these bad decisions. I can't imagine. It breaks my heart to think of my mom watching at these moments of like, you know, in my life. Uh, and, and that must only live in her imagination. But for, for her to be there, that was an emphasis of what I wanted that camera work to feel like and why Aaron Nathie's cinematography is so intimate and so yeah. close. I, uh, Meredith, for example, our associate director called it uh, like pretty, but like dark. Yeah. You know, it's like we are filming something that is very dark and and like smoking hills, but it had, there's a sunset in the background and it's shot so beautifully and closely. Like you're falling in love with these characters that are killing themselves. So, um, so yeah. Get right now, there we go. <laughs> no, I've heard members of the um, Stony Brook uh, Society have been telling that their family and friends that it was CGI. It was not CGI. Okay. You only have to bite your toenail once, and then you have it forever, and it's a hundred feet across. Come on, guys! You only have to bite your toenail yeah, once. So if you're coming tomorrow, you to can any just... aspiring actor out there, I want to say you only have to bite your toenail once. Okay. <laughs> and it's it's shaped. I'll, I'll take it out for you. I did this for the cop when we got pulled over to the reveal. You know, you pop it out, and you have to do this a little, you know, get that little spit out of there too. But um, but it's fit to my teeth. <laughs> um, and so, in the movie, and you take it out to eat. So Jacob takes it out in the movie to eat sometimes. You see him like eating this like apple and he puts his teeth back in. But um, for me, like I, I put it on and started wearing it in the pre-production and like while we were getting ready so I could get used to talking with it. Um, and then after that, when we shot the movie, it was like I would wear it and then someone would be like, oh, what's the grill for? And I'm like, oh, we shot our movie, it's called Anchorage, you know, follow us. And so it just became this conversation started for the film. And now I think it's just like part of who I am. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, at Anchorage Movie. Please follow, share our trailers, spread the word. Ind independent filmmaking is, thrives on that. Literally, that kind of stuff, that kind of engagement is what gets people in the seats. Once you get a distribution deal and in your theaters or on Netflix or whatever, that stuff matters. So give us a follow, shoot us a message, you know. Throw We're us nice. I know we look a little scary, <laughs> but come on, folks. Look at this. We're cute. What? Right? Right? I can do I a little judge. <laughs>